I try to make big clashes and, and I try to tell stories through mm. these clashes. This historical feeling is there, but then you have also this punk element which mm -hmm. is there. A moment where I had to reinvent myself to, to continue. And I think we had a total probably 300 models. We don't have the formal like. No, 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 I get it. <laughs> Please say your name and what you do. So, Walter van Bernonk, and I'm a fashion designer. Yeah. And you, you selected a few different runway shows for us to talk about in detail from your archive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, did, was there a particular reason you picked those runway shows? Um, no, because it is rather difficult to pick yeah. something. And, uh, yeah. But I think when you ask to, to pick them, I just did an effort and mm -hmm. I was thinking uh, which ones are for, were for me very important and, and, and were also important in the decade that I was working because mm -hmm. the most the oldest one is from almost 25 years ago, I think. It so is, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, but uh, it's just um, a spontaneous choice and, mm -hmm. and the shows which, I mean, I can tell something about, I can't do that from every show, sure. but there is something particular in these shows, I think. Good, good. So let's start with the first one. It was uh, Neon Shadow, Spring 2022. Mm -hmm. This is your latest collection and the short film that comes with this is very striking. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, of course, um, uh, I realized this collection completely during the pandemic. It was um, not that easy to work. And then definitely uh, I'm, I'm used normally to do fashion shows, mm -hmm. but I was uh, forced to, to do something different. But already it was the third time I did something different digital. And um, I really, I felt from the beginning with the, the energy I wanted to, to get into collection, I wanted to create this kind of fake um, a pop a band, a fake band. Mm -hmm. And I created, in fact, Neon Shadow. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I created also uh, the look, the, the, the feeling around. We worked together with the subs on the music. Mm -hmm. And then we made, in fact, a, a video to present the collection. But as it was a band who was uh, on tour, who was performing, who was performing live also, mm -hmm. And um, I was really happy with the final result because it is an energy. It's like starting, it's like exploding, and it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's that what I wanted. Very cool. And mm -hmm. at the end, there's this kind of call to arms. It's very commanding, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the message at the end. And it reminded me a lot of a conversation that a lot of viewers on my channel have been having recently where they're talking. I made a mention about uh, Demna did a show that sort of seemed to reference the, the end of subculture because of the internet. And um, you clearly have very strong opinions yeah, about the subculture and, the, yeah. and a lot of, to me it was interesting because a lot of the kids that watched my channel that are in maybe high school, um, they said that they had never heard that this had happened and that they assumed that they themselves were participating in subculture and there was also this disappointment because they felt like they were being shortchanged. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, that there was yeah. something like in the 90s and the 80s which that, was completely different yeah. and, and different energy. Do you feel do you feel that subculture is kind of dying out? Yeah, I, that's exactly what I felt and that's why I was doing the statement that I lived that period and I felt there obviously subcultures mm -hmm. which were very important, which were very you were aware of them because they were happening, they were visible mm -hmm. and they were also like in in uh, getting having a lot of uh, influence and a lot of uh, um, yeah, interaction with fashion, with fashion design as yeah. well. So. And that is something that completely disappeared. Mm. And that's why, in fact, I, I created a little bit my own subculture eh, by, by creating the looks yeah. for Neon Shadow. But it's a, a pity, and I can imagine that, that young people are missing that kind of energy. Mm -hmm. But it could be that it's completely yeah, eaten by the, the, the social media, by the way that we are dealing now with, with each other and the mm -hmm. interaction is completely different, I think. It is. And it, uh, it moved from, from uh, yeah, almost like a hidden subculture into something now very visible all over the world. So I don't know why, but mm -hmm. I miss it. Yeah. Worlds of Sun and Moon, Fall, Winter 2018. Mm -hmm. I'll let you start on this one. Yeah, yeah Worlds of Sun and Moon is standing for uh, Worlds of uh, uh, S&M. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, also a little bit like a, um, a message about um, um, 
yeah, dealing with power. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I, I always find it a very interesting topic and also some, a topic which is giving me a lot of inspiration despite mm -hmm. the fact that I'm not actively mm -hmm. doing it. It's still something which is fascinating me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's why I call the collection that way and also the whole uh, vibe and the, the, the styling, the, the feeling was very much in that direction. So very it was, um, I mean, sometimes my show in, are more in a kind of dreamy, dreamy and, and, and fantasy uh, direction, but the other side is then the more the harder, the, mm -hmm. the, the tougher direction, and Sun and Moon was uh, a collection like that. Mm -hmm. And I was, um, I mean, I, I really love to work on a collection because I, I created this uh, square shape, so mm -hmm. all the garments were, were um, like, um, created and designed in a square way so we had mm. like square shoulders and very cubic um, volumes mm. and um, and it yeah it created together with the styling the sunglasses the nets over the heads the shiny faces mm. and on top uh, the presentation was in a kind of uh, on the ground, in, yeah, under the ground, literally in, mm -hmm. in Paris, in uh, different rooms, and it was with very loud uh, techno music. So yeah. it's really the mood yeah. that I, I like to work in, and, and uh, yeah, it was very I loved cool. the collection. Yeah, I love that one too. And the um, the pig motif really interested me. Yeah, because yeah, before yeah, yeah. I saw that show, I had never seen that word in just isolation before, and yeah. it, it's a really striking kind of almost like the, the feeling almost feels like a fence when you see that word in isolation and then the, the visual motif that repeated with, with it. Yeah. Um, how, how are you using that symbol? Yeah, of course, it it's, uh, reminds me of the, the big masks that are used in the, in, mm -hmm. the, in the rubber world also. Eh? And, yeah. and in fact, it has on one side a very um, yeah, like funny, almost comic mm -hmm. feeling, also the way that I worked with the ears in the yeah. latex feelings. But then there were the, the obvious, the holes, uh, which were referring to glory halls and, and all course, these yeah. things. So it's it's like playing with these different um, yeah, f uh, emotions almost mm -hmm. from very tough and very funny and, and that's a little bit how uh, yeah, how my work comes together. Also mm -hmm. the way I'm thinking, the way I'm working. I try to make big clashes and, and I try to tell stories through mm. these clashes. Yeah. And then we have Revolution, Fall Winter 2001. And this is an older one that I know your fans definitely want to hear about. Uh -huh. What can you tell me here? Yeah, Revolution. Um, it was the one where uh, David was the model in. Don't no know that way. you realized. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I did not realize that. Yeah. <laughs> you looked great, David. Yes, I mean, still looks great. But still at that time, great. you looked. Uh, <laughs> He, um, I mean, David was doing a lot of my shows at that time. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and in fact, it was a moment that uh, uh, revolution, it was ex a moment that it was completely, uh, I broke up with uh, the past, I broke up with Walt, I was restarting from scratch my own line. Wow. And uh, it was, uh, I really wanted to express myself in, in a very extreme way because it was, um, a, a very difficult moment also like uh, to rebuild to to invest again money to to try oh, to is this is this when um, a yeah. aesthetic terrorist came to an end was that no it you, was, was it? when uh, what a little trash came to an end oh, but okay. also aesthetic terrorist it was the, the same period uh -huh. and it was for me like uh, uh, restarting from from of zero, course, yeah, and uh, and uh, literally, I I, um, I really uh, used every opportunity to make this collection. So in fact, all the fabrics were coming from second-hand stores. It was wow. all um, uh, like fifties, uh, sixties uh, old uh, um, material mm -hmm. that I combined with a very um, historical uh, look. Almost mm -hmm. the the coats were like historical. Uh, inspired and also shaped, mm -hmm. and then uh, together with the the incroyable look, like the, even the hair and the, the styling, the huge colors, the big ties. Mm -hmm. So it was a very um, almost over designed, extreme collection, which was very important for me to make my transition from from getting it from the scratch into again into mm -hmm. yeah the Walter van Berno collections. Yeah, and um, it was really a. a, a a moment where I had to reinvent myself to mm. to continue to continue on, and it was also I mean we did it with the I want to uh, create the energy with the uh, the, the the motorcycles which mm -hmm. are in the in the video, and then that revolution collection became such an important collection, and and at the end 
all these looks are now in museums all mm -hmm. over the world. So it was really like a, yeah, a changing point in my career, I think. And that's mm. why it was such an important collection. Definitely. Despite the fact that it was hardly commercialized, it was purely a statement and, and we sold a little bit to a few shops, but it was mainly to, yeah, to, to, to keep on going mm -hmm. because I really had to push myself after all these problems and, and yeah. uh, to go on. A new beginning. A new beginning. Yeah, Very yeah. cool. And it seems like there was a reference, like with the huge collars, and it, it seemed almost like it was making a reference to the Peacock Revolution in the 60s, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is definitely, uh, yeah, it's, it's a kind of, but that, also that revolution was really based on the, the incroyable, eh? the, mm -hmm. the, um, the French Revolution moment when they were suddenly completely dressing up in a different way, wearing mm -hmm. different clothes than the, the previous. So this peacock evolution is also, mm -hmm. has a lot to do with that Definitely. moment, I think. And it's such a, it's such a striking, um, especially considering it came out in 2001, which, I mean, I don't think of that collection, the Revolution collection, as being very, it's, it, it almost seems contrary to what most men wanted to dress like in 2001, but it works so well because yeah. it, it's badass looking. Like yeah, it yeah, really, yeah, yeah. And that seems to be what early 2000s, that's what all guys, they were like, I just want to look badass. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it really pulls that off. How, yeah. how did you strike that balance with it? Because I, I look at it and I, I, like I said, it looks badass to me, but I can't make sense of how you made the elements balance themselves. Yeah. Oh, I do that rather spontaneous because I knew that I, I really wanted like a different, uh, yeah, this historical feeling is there, but then you have also this punk element which mm -hmm. is there with the zips and, uh, mm -hmm. and then you have these this oversized elements like the colors and the huge ties which mm -hmm. are a completely different reference. And, and it is, it's not that I'm sitting there and I'm thinking I want to do something badass. No, it's, it's more happening. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's mostly with all the, collections that I make and making it's very personal and very spontaneous uh, yeah very cool thing but how I'm working and what I'm doing very cool yeah and then we have a fan favorite wild and lethal trash spring mm -hmm. 98 which is affectionately referred to as the square dancing show I'm gonna resist adding commentary up front and just let you talk <laughs> for a second yeah, yeah, yeah it was in fact my dancing show and, um, and, and uh, at that time, the, the, the water little tra trash shows, they were attracting like sometimes 2,000, 2,500 people. So it was oh, wow. like a huge event. It mm -hmm. was, uh, we did them all in, the, the Paris, in Paris during the Men's Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. But it was like a huge event and I also had like unlimited uh, possibilities to mm -hmm. put a show on stage. And, um, and, and that show, I really wanted to, to focus on dancing. And, um, and every part had a different uh, way of, of uh, uh, it was actually, it was also inspired by David Lynch, by the movie, I don't know which one. Uh, the movie which is changing completely. In is the it middle. Eraserhead? No, 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 no. Uh, one That's of the, the only one I know, I'm so no, sorry. No, 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 no. But, <laughs> but it's, uh, I made it at that time, I don't know which one it is, but mm. the movie, the, it's, a, it's changing completely uh, subject actors in the middle of the movie. Oh, well. And that uh, made me think, uh, why not making a fashion show, a presentation, mm -hmm. which has different parts and which is changing drastically. Mm -hmm. so also the atmosphere was changing, the, mm -hmm. the, the models were completely different completely, ones. And they acted different. Every, yeah, everything yeah. was different acted different uh, and then we started with line dancing uh, mm -hmm. so that was rather surprising <laughs> yeah. I was working for weeks and weeks with a group of line dancers here in Belgium and uh, literally everybody from the club was joining okay and uh, I, wonder, I was like this is good coordination how <laughs> did they do this <laughs> no no they were really practicing for weeks and weeks good and um, and they were also happy also to go to Paris we brought them over to Paris and mm -hmm. to be on a catwalk for such a big audience, mm -hmm. but it really set the tone of the show. So it's like funny dancing, and uh, it was also the moment that I launched uh, all the sneakers with all the animals. So oh, of see course, all these yeah. Animal faces, so the cool. wolves and the, the bears and the, the, the dogs and all these things. Yeah. And um, and for the rest, it was rather, I mean, a simple look. It was a little bit uh, um, inspired by by. Uh, Scouts, 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 you say? Oh, scouts, scouts in the United yeah, States? Yeah, yeah the scouts feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was the first part, and then the second one changed uh, completely another mood. 
And then the, um, I think the, the most striking was the third one with the stilts. Mm -hmm. So it was a complete uh, part with uh, like 30 uh, models, I think, mm -hmm. which were all wearing stilts, mm -hmm. uh, like a painter stilts. Mm -hmm. And um, I, the whole collection was, uh, uh, that part of the collection was uh, designed with um, uh, plastic surgery in my head, how mm -hmm. uh, in the future eventually plastic surgery would change completely the For physics. Taller. Yeah. yeah, like taller, but also different length and hangs extra fingers if you need to. Mm -hmm. So it was like uh, really uh, yeah, thinking about how uh, plastic surgery could change the physical body in the future also. And it, I, it kind of has, like we're, and I mean, not, not for taller, but we're, we're nearly there. Yeah, it's, it's happening, of course, yeah. yeah. And then, um, so it was um, also all the, the hats mm -hmm. that were, were all made by Stephen Jones, he made like... I wondered if it was Stephen Jones. No, no, I so worked always with Stephen for yeah. all the hats I did. Uh, so he did all these hair hats also mm -hmm. in red. And um, yeah, it, it's, it was rather, the show was, I mean, it was an incredible mm -hmm. vibe and feeling. And then at the end, I ended with the ballroom dancing, mm -hmm. with all the evening dresses, the numbers, also referring to the, the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember it by it. Blue Velvet? Relic? Blue Velvet? No, no, not Blue Velvet. This was another, the dancing movie, the, the contest the movie. Oh, uh, is it Strictly Ballroom? Mm, no, the one that also McQueen inspired him on for a show. But anyway, it mm -hmm. was uh, the numbers, and it was for me like with the gas masks, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like uh, alien, mm -hmm. uh, alien dances, almost like a contest somewhere mm -hmm. on the planet. And um, yeah, that, and the show was like going from one mood into another, and mm -hmm. and, and I think we had a in total probably. 300 models on stage. Yeah. Was there, I mean, because it, it's so hard for me, because I, my knowledge of fashion really starts around the spring 2016 season, because mm -hmm. that's what I was there for. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, it's hard to know the cultural context for these things. Back when you were showing for, that, say, that specific show in Paris, I, I can't think of anyone else back then who would have been doing anything like that. Like that must have been, I mean, you had Martin doing very interesting things a few years before that, but there was never anything where it felt like a, a riot of models coming on the stage. No, of course, we, we, when we were at school, we, we, uh, we went to see uh, Montana, Mugler, that kind mm -hmm. of shows. So that, at that time, you had also this kind of spectacle shows. Okay. But uh, when I was uh, doing these shows, it was rather quiet on the, on the catwalk. Mm -hmm. You had, uh, I mean, it was always in the middle of the, the, the normal, Paris Fashion Week, and, mm -hmm. and but I was bringing completely different product. I really wanted to do something much more streetwear mm -hmm. orientated, or at least to mix uh, uh, more uh, formal wear with streetwear. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, it was very on a on, yeah, very mm -hmm. not done. It was rather strange to be between the other designers, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the other shows were uh, yeah, they were mostly smaller or uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Pleasure.